Hello friends, my name's the Real Meal and welcome back to some more Forza Top Gear laps. Now first and foremost, I do want to apologise for the fact that this episode uh, was not up earlier. However, we are back and today we are looking at British cars. Now for those of you who don't know how this series works, basically what I do is I take seven cars, in the case of this episode, drive them for six laps around the Top Gear test track and then take the best time, the first car up today was the Lotus Carlton, 379 horsepower, 3,641 pounds of weight. The Lotus Carlton is one of my more favourite vehicles uh, ever. It's a bit of a mad car, really, this. The Vauxhall Carlton wasn't a particularly exciting car, but then Lotus uh, sort of tuned it and made this the fastest four-door saloon car in the world for almost, well, more than a decade, actually. Um, as far as the way it actually drove on Forza Motorsport 6 here, it was actually reasonably good. It's quite a nice and smooth car to drive. Now, it's not nice and smooth in the sense that it has no problems. What I basically mean is it's a very... You very much know what it's doing and it's very smooth about doing it. Yes, the rear end will slide out, but it's not like most oversteering moments where it's sort of an uncontrollable slide out and then you quickly need to flick the wheel and so on and so forth. This car just sort of naturally slides out uh, and it's very very easy to control actually uh, which is quite nice. Gearing is pretty spot on for this sort of track. Um, yeah, the Vauxhall Lotus Skeleton was a pretty damn nice vehicle uh, to drive around here which is good because I really like the Lotus Skeleton and I hope it does well. Uh, next up, completely different car here, the Aston Martin V12 Vantage S, 565 horsepower, 3,671 pounds of weight. Now we have had an Aston Martin Vanquish round which basically has exactly the same engine in it. So it's kind of curious to see how the slightly smaller V12 Vantage S would do. It's also worth noting we reviewed this car back in Forza Horizon 2 and I found it to be pretty exceptional when it came to its handling. Here in Forza Motorsport 6, unfortunately, it has lost some of that excellence. It's uh, much more of a slidey vehicle uh, than it was back in Horizon 2. In Horizon 2, it was very much a handling car. Uh, it was very consistent. It was a great car to take on sort of scenic road trips. In this game, it seems a little bit more hardcore. The rear end will slide out on it, although there isn't really much in the way of understeer. As far as the weight goes, 3,600 pounds is actually quite heavy, uh, especially for a sports super GT car. I guess that's the best way to describe this car. Um, but ultimately, you don't really feel the weight too badly. Not as much as you do in, say, the Vanquish or the DBS or anything like that. But yeah, the V12 Vantage, not quite as nice as it used to be, but still not a terrible car. And now for something also completely different. This is a Jaguar XK120 SE, 210 horsepower, 3,015 pounds of weight. The Jaguar XK120 was the fastest car in the world back in its day, uh, which was of course 19... was it 1949? I believe the version in this game is slightly older because it is the SE model. Uh, which I believe came with slightly more power. Anyways, the XK120 it looks like a very interesting car, and it is a very interesting car to drive. Um, it very much drives like an oldie race car, that's what it feels like, especially in cockpit mode. Uh, it feels more like a single seater than anything else. But as far as the handling's concerned, this is a pretty decent car to drive. There isn't any real sliding or understeer or anything to really make you aware of. The biggest complaint with this car is sort of the wallowy suspension. You can see it come through the corners. It's an oldish car. It's got oldie road suspension, which was very, very wallowy and soft, um, which can be a bit of an issue when it comes to taking corners. Uh, but it isn't a particularly quick car, so it sort of irons them out relatively well. It doesn't weigh too much. It is the lightest car here today at 2,161 pounds, but still more than a Miata. So I'd be kind of curious to see how this does compared to, say, MX-5s and other sorts of vehicles like that. But anyway, around the final corner and across the line for the XK120. 
Next up we have the NG Metro 6R4, 250 horsepower, 2,161 pounds of weight. Sorry, this is the lightest car, the XK120 is the second lightest. There we go, anyway, I got that the right way around. I love the MG Metro uh, getting onto this car. This is a fantastic looking car, it looks mental, it's very, very mental. Uh, fun fact, the engine out of this is actually used in the XJ220. But what most surprised me about the Metro 6R4 is that it's actually absolutely bloody fantastic to drive. This really is a awesome car to drive, it's got so much grip, it's really, really, really good. The issue with this car though is it takes no prisoners, as in you get something wrong, this car will throw you out. If you get it right, then it's absolutely spot on, but if you get something wrong, this car will just throw you into a wall around. The follow through in particular is having lots of issues with that curb. Um, the other issue with the Metro is that while it's geared beautifully, it runs out of complete steam at 110 miles an hour, as in it tops out at about 115. Uh, it just doesn't have the straight line speed for this sort of place. Uh, to put it into perspective, this is one of the fastest accelerating A-Class cars, the 60, but one of the slowest to 100 miles an hour. But anyways, next up we have the Bowler EXRS, 550 horsepower, 3,858 pounds of weight. Now, the Bowlers, I was kind of curious to see how this would do, considering it's sort of a all-terrain race car, but it's also meant for some track racing, I guess. You could probably track race a Bowler. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do. Uh, 550 horsepower is reasonably powerful. Um, compared to everything else here today, it's not, like, ridiculously powerful, but still pretty powerful. 3,858 pounds isn't that bad when you consider this thing is based on a Range Rover. As far as the way it drives, well, the bowler is nice. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, it doesn't really drive like you'd expect an SUV to. It doesn't feel weighty, per se. As in, it really doesn't feel weighty at all, which is quite surprising. Um, Four-wheel drive does mean that you do get some understeer from the bowler. You have to be so careful uh, coming out of the tyres, just sort of maybe brake a little bit so you don't go wide. Uh, but other than that, the bowler was pretty good. Uh, I have to say, I quite like driving this car around here. Next up, uh, we have the Range Rover Supercharged, 510 horsepower, 5,612 pounds of weight, sorry. Um, now, the Range Rover Supercharged, this is probably the biggest surprise of the day, if it's not the Metro, um, because the Range Rover was a very, very nice car to drive. I've tried driving the SUVs in Forza Motorsport 5 and even a little bit in Horizon 2 and they're always fantastically horrible to drive. Like they have so, so much understeer. But the Range Rover Supercharged here doesn't really have too much of it. It doesn't feel too much like you're driving an SUV. Now of course it does weigh a lot and you can feel that weight. You really can in this vehicle. Um, it's big. I mean, look at it. It's huge, but it's honestly not too bad, and it makes a fantastic noise. Uh, I believe the supercharged engine in this is what they use in the uh, Jaguars as well, like the XJRS and stuff like that. Uh, I'm probably butchering that. I can't. I, it's not the XJ, is it? Anyways, uh, I'm going off on a tangent but yeah the Range Rover Supercharge it sounds fantastic it doesn't drive nearly as bad as you'd think it would and there's another thing as well there's like no body roll in this thing like the suspension is relatively decent actually for an off-road car yeah I was fully surprised by the Range Rover Supercharge and next up we have the Royals Royce Rafe 624 horsepower 5380 pounds of weight this is the most powerful car here today and to be honest with you, this feels like more of an SUV than the Range Rover did. This really does feel like you're driving an SUV. Uh, for a kickoff, this has atrocious handling. It's just horrible. This thing just all it wants to do is understeer and then oversteer and understeer then oversteer. Isn't a very nice car to drive. Secondly, you do sit actually quite high up in the vehicle, so it really does feel like you are driving an SUV. And the other thing is the dashboard. Because the interior of this car is white, 
it actually reflects onto the windscreen. And that means you can barely see where you're going. Couple this to the fact that there's actually no ref counter in the car, so when you're shifting it's a little bit random. And what you've got is a very, very tricky car uh, to drive, especially when the sun is shining as it is here today at Dunsfold. Yeah, I didn't have much fun driving the Royals Royce Wraith. The one good thing about this car is it does have exceptional straight line speed. It's actually quite quick. Uh, which is not what you'd really expect from a Royals Royce. Uh, so, I mean, it has got that in its favour, but I don't recommend driving this car at all. It was terrible. Anyways, on to the times, and the V12 Vantage goes into 42nd with a 119.465, narrowly beating the Aston Martin Vanquish and slightly shorter than the Jaguar F Type R. So, pretty. I was expecting the V12 to be quite a bit quicker than the Vanquish, but there you go. Moving on, the MG Metro goes into 52nd with a 120.651, mixing up with a Tesla, Ferrari 575 Marileno, the Corvette C5. Yeah, that Metro was uh, surprisingly quick and very, very nice to drive. Moving down the board, the Bowler EXRS goes into 67th with a 123.019, beating out a Ford Mustang, R32 Skyline. Pretty decent time, really, from the Bowler, I do have to say. Uh, moving down again, we find the Lotus Carlton in 72nd with a 124.384, faster than a modern Volvo um, hot saloon, which is quite cool. And the Royals Royce Wraith goes into 74th with a 124.786, beats out an Evo 6 and a BMW M5, which is actually very impressive uh, from the Royals Royce. The Range Rover Supercharged goes into 98th with a 128.726, getting exactly the same time as a Holden Commodore. SV. Two cars which you'd never associate with each other. It is faster than a GT86 though, which is quite impressive. And finally, the Jaguar XK120 SE may have been the fastest car in the world, but at, one four, at 114th place, it isn't the fastest car around this track. It gets beaten by Miata by over 0.6 of a second. Um, so yeah, the XK120 wasn't as impressive as I thought it would be. Anyways, friends, that is it for this week's episode. There may be another episode this week, just to make up for the fact that there wasn't one last week, but I haven't quite decided. I'm also thinking about bringing the individual uh, Top Gear Lap episodes back, so yeah, keep an eye out for those. I'll make more of an announcement of that in the next Top Gear Laps video. Anyways, I want to thank you all very much for watching. My name's been The Real Emil. Until next time, farewell.